do you have plans for like um, opening a brick and mortar where you are or do you think you'll be a home baker? Yeah, so I don't. I, I got into being um, a cookier to do it out of my home. Um, mm -hmm. I'd love to be able to do that um, for a while. I don't have the desire um, to necessarily, I'm not, never say never, you never know. <laughs> right. But that's really not what I'm working towards. Hey y'all, today's video is a clip from a recent call with a guest speaker inside the cookie career community. Our speaker this month was Rebecca Pilgreen. She is a cookie decorator from Georgia and one of the founders of Sugar Bakings. I think you're really going to enjoy the call with her. If you enjoy the video today, definitely drop down in the description and check out the Cookie Career community. It is a really affordable way to get started in networking and building your cookie decorating business. Every month we offer a guest speaker coaching call where you can hop in on Zoom or in Facebook Live and hear from cookie decorators like you. I also hop in and do a live coaching call every single month where I offer training, tips, and encouragement for growing your cookie decorating business without burnout and staying up all night. We're a group of cookie decorators networking together, connecting together, and growing together. Welcome to our guest call with the lovely Rebecca Pilgreen. Am I saying that right, Rebecca? You are. Yes, you good, are. Good, good. With Rebecca Pilgreen from Sugar Bakings. She's here to share her story with us today uh, as our guest here in the Cookie Career community, and I'm so excited to get to meet you. So as we get started, I'm just going to kind of Tell a little bit about you. This is the bio that we um, kind of work together to create so that y'all kind of have a bit of her background. She is the creative brain power behind Sugar Bakings, a sugar cookie company based out of Georgia. So she's a Southern girl like me. <laughs> what started as a lovely creative outlet soon became a thriving baking business and her confectionery designs have graced publications like Shelby Living Magazine, Hoover's Magazine, and after viewing her beautiful social media, we know that you are going to agree that her cookies are <laughs> must taste as good as they look. I apologize. I got a little tongue tied. <laughs> so those magazines, when I looked at those, um, I've looked at your website and it looks like it's a lot of um, just like the really beautiful bridal special occasion cookies. And I love stuff like that. It is. It's been really fun. I um, I actually, I'm definitely a Southern girl. I actually started in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, okay. and we, that's where my husband and I both um grew up. We live, um, or lived when we first got married. And um, my husband travels for work. Um, he traveled a lot more then. And so um, I just would see those videos on Instagram and think, I feel like I could do that. You know, I really yeah. didn't have any experience. I went to one cookie class. And, um, the cookies looked amazing. I came home and they didn't look as good. So, um, proof that you just have to practice. That's what, you know, the whole, the whole, um, game is. And so from there, um, I really started, I like launched my business, um, right before COVID started. And, um, from there started doing those little cookie boxes, the decorating boxes, yes. and those really took off. Um, and then that kind of helped when things started opening back up for people to, um, be ordering, um, more cookies. And then the heat sealing of the cookies really helped when people were doing the drive-by showers and stuff like that. So, um, it was a weird time to start, but it ended up being a really, um, a good time. So from there, we ended up moving to Georgia about two years ago. Um, and so I kind of was starting over a little bit, um, but have really been welcomed into this community. And so it's, it's been a really um, fun transition. That's so exciting. And it really was a weird time. It was like, sometimes I think I was busier during lockdown with cookies yeah. than I was the entire time, because it was like, people needed that entertainment and those DIY boxes, those were selling like hotcakes back then. Mm -hmm, um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Giving people something to do with their kids. Yes. For sure. Yes. We needed that so badly. <laughs> yes. So what are you excited about right now and the, your dreams and goals for the future of your business? I love hearing people's future plans. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my, like one of my small dreams is, um, I hope to in the next few months get a double oven. Um, right now I'm working with my single oven and she has been doing so good. Um, <laughs> but it's been on my radar to try to get one, um, for a while, but 
that is hopefully coming in the next few months. And then um, just kind of building um, connections with the community. Um, where we ended up moving um, is, uh, you know, the, the whole county is very, and there's just a lot going on and things like that. So I've been able to kind of get into some business clubs, some um, networking opportunities. And that's just not something that I really did um, in the Birmingham area. And so that's been really fun. It's been really fun to build connections. Um, I always tell business owners that your logo would look and taste good on a cookie. And people really do love, you know, to see their logo on a cookie. So um, so that's been kind of fun, just building those connections. Uh, we've been here for two years, which, you know, has been a little bit of time, but we're still, you know, learning. We're not from here. Um, so building those connections, and that's been really fun. That's awesome. And those community connections, it seems like it makes it more fun to me when you're able to make cookies for people you know and have connected yes. with before. Um, it really just makes it a more enjoyable experience. Yes. <laughs> Do you have plans for like um, opening a brick and mortar where you are, or do you think you'll be a home baker? Yeah, so I don't. I I got into being um, a cookier to do it out of my home. Um, mm -hmm. I'd love to be able to do that um, for a while. I don't have the desire um, to necessarily. I'm not. Never say never. You never know. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's really not what I'm working towards. Um, but I I love that for people that that's their end goal because that's yeah. that's so fun too. And I love like walking into bakeries and things like that. Um, but it's been really fun to be able to just be more um, present at home, um, especially with my husband traveling and stuff like that. Both of us working full time, that was difficult. Um, and so it's just been nice to, um, to have the time at home. Absolutely. The work from home life, it is really, really nice. Um, mm -hmm. You know, catch up on a load of laundry while you yes. <laughs> wait yes. for the icing to dry. It was really exactly. nice to me too. Exactly. And I felt like I went through a phase where I felt like I should want to have a bakery. <laughs> and like you, mm -hmm. I'm never going to say never. But, you know, I think a lot of us feel like we should have that mm -hmm. brick and mortar end goal. And that's mm -hmm. not necessarily what we all want. Exactly. It's not everybody's goal. Um, I, like I said, I think it's so fun when that when that is the goal, because mm -hmm. um, that is like it, it is fun to walk into those places. And that's it great. Is. But like you, I felt like I had to little, wrestle a little bit with, cause that's what I got a lot of like, Oh, do you want to open up a store one day? And I was kind of like, I don't know that I do. I think I got into this to be at home more. And that's, right. that's the goal. You know, it's like, is it bad if I say no, I don't, <laughs> I, I, I want to keep working from home. I know. I know. Yes. Yeah, tell exactly. us your favorite business win. We want to hear about a win now. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's been a lot of fun, you know, um, things over the, over the years, just, um, being able to create cookies for people's special day or events or something like that and getting texts that this was exactly what I wanted, or this was so fun, you know, kind of thing. Um, but I, um, have really worked hard to build those connections in the community and, um, be able to have some of those reoccurring orders, um, for logos, for, um, different events that happen, you know, um, you know, every quarter or something like that. So, um, that's not something that I always had, which was, you know, people, um, you know, getting on the books, um, you know, months or, you know, having re reoccurring orders. Um, and that's something I've kind of worked hard to build. And so, um, it feels nice to kind of be able to sit back and think, oh, okay, that's, you know, that's happening. So I would say that's yes. kind of a win for sugar bakings. Those are so nice. And just having that comfort of knowing like, you're used to working with this person and yes, that, those are yes. really nice orders mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for sure. What is your favorite type of cookie that you have decorated? And can you tell us a cookie design that you hope you never have to do again? Yes. Um, some of my favorite cookies are, um, probably like the trendy ones, like the, um, you know, the, um, just like probably I would say bachelorette cookies, like yeah. the fun, the bright colors, the, um, you know, just, um, just very like fun cookies that, um, that, you know, maybe have like a fun saying or like an inside joke for the group or something like that. Those just make me laugh because they're fun to do. And they're, you know, I know they're going to like make the event more special and things like that. So those are really fun. Some of the cookies that I don't love, I do them. So if any of my customers see this, um, but <laughs> it's probably the character cookies or things that are very like, um, you know, I, I think that sometimes you can get away with it if it's, you know, um, 
it kind of your own creative, you know, ideas, but when it's like very specific, or a very detailed logo or something like that. Um, and the repetitive doing it over and over. Sometimes that can be a little like, you know, kind of thing, but love them. They're good. But um, definitely those like very detailed or you're kind of looking at the logo and you're like, does that look like what's on this cookie? So <laughs> that kind of thing. And the color matching on those two, sometimes it can be really hard. Like you get the design right. And then it's like, did that orange look like the same orange that was on the picture? And you're trying to translate it from computer to cookie and it's yes. very difficult. And all of the cookie years will know some colors just dry differently. Um, so when you get into Christmas and things like that, the green that you started with might not be the green or red that you, that dries. <laughs> and that's okay. It's not, it's usually not too far off, but I definitely agree. Color matching is very difficult. So. And our creative brains, like we, we notice stuff like that. And I wonder like, do other people who see this notice the slot change right. from like the Facebook picture to the end results? Because like, it'll keep me up at night, but I don't think right. most people notice it that much. <laughs> right. I know. I know. Yes. Okay. So you teach some seasonal cookie decorating classes. We'd love to learn some more about that leg of your business and how that works. Yeah, um, it's one of my favorite parts. I am um, an extrovert uh, by nature. So um, sometimes being by myself in the kitchen over and over that um, can get a little, you know, lonely at times. So I love doing classes. Um, I've done Halloween and, um, and Christmas and um it's, uh, it's just a really fun way for people to have something to do together. You know, we have, um, drinks and snacks and stuff like that. And then, um, what I've been doing in my uh, past few classes is I've been able to have, um, spaces that have a TV or a big screen at the front and I'll pre, uh, film me actually, um, decorating the cookie and then I'll be able to play it over and over on a loop as people are doing it in the class. Um, so it's been um, helpful to be able to kind of walk around. At the beginning, I, I did it in the class with everybody, which is also a great way to do it. It's just a different way that um, I ended up trying out one of the classes and it um, ended up being a, a success and um, people can see it over and over and you're able to kind of walk around. So it's allowed me to have bigger classes because I'm able to kind of walk around Instagram and my Facebook is sugar bakings, um, with an S and, um, my website is www.sugarbakings.com. So, okay, um, that's awesome. where I am on, on social. Okay. So a lot of, uh, the cookie, uh, the cookie community is, um, you know, kind of local. So this is fun that it's, you know, being able to talk to people from everywhere because, um, that's not always the case. So this is great. Mm -hmm. It's a good mix. It's like we get to interact with our local communities, but we have mm -hmm. a commu a broader community mm -hmm. online where we get to talk over Zoom. The internet can be a blessing in a lot of ways. Yes, I agree. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Rebecca. We appreciate you sharing your story and just the inspiration that you've given us today. 